Hey, there's something going on here. What's happening? There's there's blocks under my car. There's there's a drain pan. Look at all the parts here. There's there's a belt. There's tools. There's something's happened. Ah, oh. yeah, someone's been in here. Someone has been in here. They've got the intake manifold out. They've got the starter pulled out of here, tied back there. They've got the intercooler lines blocked with cloth. The power steering pump's been unbolted and pulled up here and zip tied back. Why, I wonder, why? What's going on here? Oh, I see it here too. Look at this and look down here. You know what this is? That's a crankshaft lock. This is for setting the static timing. So when this is, there's a, there's a plug actually. I can see, I'll show you. See, there's a hole there. It's in, mounted in behind the starter and there's this tool you can buy. It comes in a kit, there's a, a camshaft lock and there's a crank lock. And when you put this in the hole here, it goes in, it bottoms out in there. Now when that's in there and you turn your crankshaft up to it, it brings the crankshaft, it lines up the, on the pulley there, I can show you in a minute, where it lines it up, where it's supposed to be for top dead center. And then what you do is you take the covers off the back and you put this locking tool in here uh, there's a slot in the end of these camshafts on the intake one it's a little higher and on the exhaust one it's a little lower than than halfway so you can't mix them up so uh, the way this tool fits on there it only fits on one way and then what it does is it, it locks them together so they can't turn now you can change the timing belt by just marking everything and then not moving the engine and just changing the belt, take it off and put it on. But it looks like this has gone a little deeper. And the fellow that was doing this wanted to make sure that he had it exactly right. He wasn't taking any chances that he might have missed a tooth when he changed the belt. And I think that's probably what happened here. Okay, so and here's the kit that I bought off of Amazon for about $60. It comes with, uh, there's the crankshaft lock and there's the camshaft lock. These are for uh, screwing down the camshaft cover. There's two of them. They go into a spark plug hole and it brings it down evenly. That's, that's another video. Like I say, if you want to make sure you set your timing correctly, this is the way to go. Crankshaft lock, camshaft lock. So actually what I'm doing here today is I'm not doing a complete timing belt change. The, the belt was changed about eight months ago. And at that point I changed the water pump, the belt, the tensioner, the idler and so that was a whole kit put in there but I was just noticing that the timing belt was tracking a little bit uh, to the outside and you see here the mark on this tensioner where it was tracking see it's running on the outside and it was pretty close to the edge of the cam gear too and I was thinking I don't know if that's right and I read that maybe sometimes it's the tensioner so that's what I'm doing I, I'm just changing the tensioner I bought a new one and um, so all the rest of the components are going to be used. They're only like six or seven months old. And uh, I was just a little worried about it. And uh, I think it's going to be fine, though. Uh, I bought this car uh, after the previous owner had uh, the water pump bearing had failed. And the timing belt jumped. And it, it ruined the head. It, I've got videos on my channel. You can just look up in here and look for a playlist I have for uh, all the Volvo videos I've got. And... Uh, yeah, so basically the head was damaged, had to be changed, and uh, that's when I picked up the car. So now I'm really leery about, you know, the stuff that goes on with either the tensioner or the belt or the water pump. So I'm, you know, kind of maybe a little hypersensitive to it because I've seen it happen. So that's what I'm doing here anyway. I'm changing this, this tensioner. So here's the timing mark. See on this outer hub here? See that raised part? Okay, that's the timing mark. And... It goes through the the valley of that tooth right there. And if you look at the other end of it very carefully, on this raised piece and that raised piece, there's a notch in the end of each of them. Okay, and none of the others have a notch in it. And that valley lines up 
with this little pointer here on the on the side of the engine housing right here okay that crankshaft lock is invaluable because when you turn this it's going to stop right at the mark see here look see it comes up and you can feel it hit it won't go any farther And see that little mark right there. It's not very much on a Volvo. They, it's almost like an afterthought where they put these timing marks, but that's the timing mark there. When we get to this uh, camshaft here, this has got a variable valve timing sprocket on it, and that's already been set up. Now there's a way to set that up from scratch if you've disturbed these bolts or if you've loosened it here. But um, if you're just changing the timing belt like we're doing here, no need to disturb any of these bolts, like these adjustment bolts on the side here or the one in the center. Just leave it and uh, you'll notice it's under spring tension like this and we'll have to bring it over hold it this way to put the timing belt on so the mark lines up the marks up here at the top if we just put the belt on like that with it uh, without advancing it on the spring uh, it would be wrong it wouldn't run right okay and then your mark is right here and that'll line up with the, the timing marks in the cover it's pretty hokey on these Volvos really I mean there's a timing mark here and a timing mark there and you have to sit this plastic cover on there and that's it believe it or not that's how they do it but uh, i'll show you that in a little more detail once we get to putting the belt on okay so i'm reusing the same belt this is only six months old so there you see the bolt is that eccentric it's sitting pretty much to the top of the bracket right like that that's how you want it when you when you put it on the engine the bolt's not tight yet you see how that little bent piece of metal it straddles that web on the engine that's where it's supposed to be. See that? That's sort of a locator. It holds it holds it upright. All right, and there's your indicator. It hasn't moved yet because we haven't turned it with the Allen wrench yet. Okay, so I got the belt on there. And I got it tensioned. And it's really hard to film down in here, but what you do is you got to hold the belt pretty tight around the bottom so it doesn't slip so you got to have the teeth of the belt down in the the cogs of that uh, sprocket and then what I did was I brought it held, holding both sides quite tight I brought this side up over over that idler and around the intake cam gear and then I brought it up over the tensioner and around the water pump and then I had a little bit here and I couldn't quite get it but what I had to do was um, I had to turn this variable valve timing hub until it stops this way and that's where the timing mark is lined up at the top and while I was holding that with one hand with the belt there I went down and you need four arms right and there's see that little tensioner you can move it you can push it right and when you push it towards this way it it uh, slackens the belt a little bit so it gives you the most uh, slack you'll ever get is if you push it all the way that way so that's what I did I had one hand down there on the tensioner and I pushed it over and I had the other hand on the belt with this held tight and I just squeezed it over and got the teeth in and it takes a number of attempts you know if, if you're not good at this and I'm I can't say I'm good at it but I got it uh, it was a, several attempts I had to try it because what would happen was the you know this this belt would slack in here you'd look and you'd see this piece here it had gone slack because you know you, you got to hold it tight the whole way and uh, it would pay to have a helper the other thing that I did was I, I put a piece of string through here there's a hole that goes all the way through I tied a knot on the other side and I pulled it tight this way so it took the um, all that uh, slack out of that uh, variable valve timing hub I, I had it all the way this way I tied it to one of these through here and and that kept it I had it almost all there I just had to move it just that little extra bit to get the belt on and that might have something to do with you know I've got this aftermarket uh, camshaft locking tool and it might be just a little slack in it you know so you might not have it exactly right but it, it's pretty close you know it's close enough and uh, and that's all I had to do this one was you know you can see the timing mark is right there this one the timing mark is right there and that's in line with the cover don't disregard all those red uh, paint marks are just uh, references for something else but uh, so here now it's this is sitting the timing marks right this is in line with the cover this is in line with the cover and the crankshaft hasn't moved and of course we still have 
the crankshaft lock in place and we have the camshaft lock in place. Now the next thing to do is to take off these locks and then what we'll do is we'll turn the engine by hand. So uh, we want to make sure everything goes around and comes back up to the same marks, okay? And then we can put our we can put our, our crankshaft locking tool in, back it up to it and, and right to the stop and then see if everything's in the same spot. Okay, so I wasn't really happy with the tensioner. I was looking at it and it was it was more, uh, you know, a little bit to the right. It wasn't uh, in the notch. And um, so there's three sort of settings you can do. If it's really quite cold out, you should set it a little bit more to the left, which it is today. So that's where I, I've set it, back over here. And if it's, you know, like a 70 degrees Fahrenheit or something, when you're putting the belt in, you kind of set it to the center. And if it's a very hot day, you would set it a little more to the right. So I've set it back over here. And I feel quite comfortable with it over here because it's quite cold. There's some flurries in the air here today. So, um, all right, and then what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the engine over uh, two full turns again. I'm turning against compression, so this, uh, there's a few little starts and stops when I'm doing it, but that's because I'm coming up against the, I have, I have, I'm coming up against the compression in the cylinder. As the plugs are still in, but we should be able to do it. Okay, here comes the mark, it's coming up. That's two turns of the crankshaft to one turn of the camshaft. And now I'm gonna put the, I've gone a little bit past it and I'm gonna put the, the crankshaft lock back in the block. That's bottomed out in there. And I'm just going to back the crankshaft up to that stop. There, there it's up against the lock. And that timing mark down there is at number one. Top dead center. And these marks came back up. This is here. The other one's right there. And so it all came around to the same spot. So our timing belt's in the right spot. And the tensioner is in a better spot there right now based on the ambient temperature. A little bit to the left, I like that. And I've already snugged this down as much as I dare. There's a, there's a torque for this and I'll put it on the screen. Okay, we're ready to put this thing back together.